Banana farmers in Isingiro district are yet to benefit from a four-year project dubbed Diversity for Resilient Agroforestry Banana Plantations in East Africa. The aim is to transform food systems to improve the lives of the farmers in the face of climate change through promotion of polyculture. Bananas are grown extensively in western Uganda and are a major source of livelihood and food. However, farmers have for a long time practiced monoculture that limits the optimization of land but also increases vulnerability to climate change. There is high susceptibility to, to pests and diseases that, that have come up due to the monoculture nature of the growing of the crop. The soils are highly exhausted because of, of mining the same minerals all the time and that certainly affects productivity and the, and the income of course. So associated with that, so there is a tendency, because it is highly paying, there is a tendency of, of a reliance on that crop which affects the nutrition security of the households. So this, this project is going to be useful because one, one is that uh, the planting of trees will protect the banana from the winds. Then secondly, there is that uh, the monoculture nature will be broken so that the, the, the soil is protected due to, 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 to addition of uh, additional nutrients from, uh, from uh, let's say, nitrogen fixation, like the, the dropping of the leaves. This is a good project because this project will help us to mitigate some of the effects of the climate change. For example, whenever there is too much wind, the banana fall. We have uh, the, coming, the new coming pests, which have no alternative hosts. They end up affecting our banana. Soils are getting ex exhausted because they don't have what to replenish back. So farmers are very, uh, very happy with the project and they are waiting for it to start. And um, also looking at, at what this project is going to help us do, it's going to also help us support farmers, like capacity building, equip them with knowledge of how to do the intervention, support with um, some seedlings, also support the nurseries, where people can also get these seedlings, which they can use to intercrop. They're also going to be trained on, on how to do these interventions, which are going to help us the entire community. Now, Alliance Biversity and the International Center for Tropical Agriculture, CIET, wants to implement a four-year project dubbed Diversity for Resilient Agroforestry Banana Plantations in East Africa to promote polyculture in Isingiro district. Polyculture is the cultivation of two or more compatible plants, including trees. Particularly looking uh, how we can increase the resilience of banana production to pest and disease outbreak but also improve the ecosystem service delivery specifically around contributing to climate mitigation but also enhancing biodiversity within these production systems that can help to increase their resilience and provide other ecosystem services. So we're looking at the combinations of different exotic and indigenous trees that can be combined with the banana without reducing its production but also enhance its ability to provide, for example, habitat for other organisms, pollinators that might improve um, the production of other plants within, within this system, and particularly contribute to pollination uh, and biocontrols of pest and disease. And the aim of the project really is to co-design new strategies of polyculture of banana production that reduces the need for inputs and increases the resilience of these systems. So this project comes in handy to help these farmers to make sure that instead of having only uh, bananas in the cropping area, they have also, they integrate in some tree species, the native tree species, which they are used to, they know they can provide benefits to them and also to the environment.
we are in the era of climate change. Many things are happening. You see, in your district, uh, for the past years, they've experienced uh, droughts in, a, in a many years. And in this, uh, to reduce this kind of impact over time, we need to find a, a solution. And one way of doing this is to make sure that we integrate these tree species in the cropping system. Yeah, this project through diversification, we intend also to improve the nutrition of within the systems, because at the moment, most of the households are focusing on banana, and a few of them can afford to buy some of these nutritious crops from outside in the market. So by introducing a diversity, a diverse basket of foods, crops, and native tree species, we hope that they can be able to attain some of their nutritional needs through this, this project. But before the project implementation kicks off, Alliance Biversity and the International Center for Tropical Agriculture, SEAT, found it prudent to first seek experiences from farmers who have practiced and organizations that have promoted polyculture. One of the organizations visited is Janinga Forestry Foundation in Kabarole District. The foundation manages and distributes indigenous tree species to farmers for intercropping with the bananas. We do give farmers indigenous trees for agroforestry. For example, Prema orientalis is one of the species that grows very fast. At the same time, for firewood, once you just cut it, and for one week you can use it for as firewood. At the same time, its leaves, they just, when they drop off, they do decompose very fast, which makes fertilizer, organic one. Prema orientalis, Mm, its leaves as well also falls down and it decompose very fast compared to other leaves for eucalyptus and other trees. Mm, this is Macamia, we call it Omusambia in our local name. So I don't know how in Uganda how they call it. It has been there for a long time and it is very common in every farm. It is one of the, of the reasons why we do give them farmers because you can even find in their areas and it has not affected any crop in their land. Uh, and we have started an agroforestry project uh, across Cabaroli district, extending here into Karangur, sub-county. Um, primarily here we're looking at trying to prevent soil erosion. Uh, the slopes here in the Ruben Zoris um, are very steep, the rains here are very intense, which means farmers, through the loss of tree cover, uh, are susceptible to landslides and generally just to the loss of soil fertility. So we're looking at ways to try and stabilize the farming system through integrating trees. Um, on top of that, we're trying to protect the Ruvenzori uh, National Park because that at the moment is the only source of firewood that the farmers have. So they're forced to go up into the National Park, which one means they lose a lot of their time uh, and also they're breaking the law by in, having to go into the park. So by including trees into the farming system, which they can then harvest for firewood, it hopefully will help to reduce the pressure. Uh, you see, Arabica coffee is the prices is, is, is decided globally so when there's a problem in 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 latin america the prices go up here or vice versa huh? so it means that that families who only have one cash crop they depend on on international markets even local markets people who only have matoke you see that prices start fluctuating they suffer immediately farmers who have practiced polyculture confess that bananas can do well with indigenous trees for as long as proper agronomic practices are followed at first when we were trying to plant these trees people were looking at us as fools because they know that trees compete with uh, bananas for nutrients and whatever. So when we planted, we also had fears, but we looked at other benefits because we know that these trees are now acting as windbreakers. And two, even the leaves, they decay and de decompose. They are, eventually, they become manure. Uh, so we are even thinking that after seven years, we shall harvest and sell timber and even get firewood. So there are also other benefits. When we have spaced the trees very well, there is no problem with trees with banana. Yeah. Uh, we have these coriandras. It is pasture for animals. It increases milk production. Once you serve, you serve it to, to the animals, milk will have to be increased. Then uh, mangoes. We are selling mangoes apart from bananas. Then we take it to the market and get money. So I'm encouraging my farmers and other farmers in this 
uh, district and the uh, nation at large to inter, inter, intercrop different uh, tree species so that they can get a lot of money. Women have also benefited greatly from polyculture since some of the trees that are intercropped with bananas provide firewood. When you intercrop the trees with a banana, it's easy for you to get the firewood that you can use to cook your food. Like for example, here in Karangura sub-county, Kavroli district, you travel, women travel long distances, go to the national park to encroach the national park to get the firewood. But when, you've inter when you have intercropped the trees with the banana, it's easy for you to get the firewood to use. To the fruit trees help in improving the nutrition, especially for children and expectant mothers, but also acts as a source of income to the farmers. The reason for the motivation to grow jackfruit is because uh, some, some seven years back, Isindro was hit by a dry spell. And uh, it was so tough that we even lost livestock. And also people had no food to eat. People sold off their lands and uh, they were looking for better places where to stay. And I was uh, given an assignment to move around the district and make an assessment of the impact of the drought. And uh, specifically, because jackfruit is an agroforestry tree in a way, uh, you find it growing amidst other crops like bananas. But I was challenged by the fact that um, wherever you would find a, a banana plantation that is almost washed away, the jackfruit was doing fairly well. And it attracted my attention. I asked myself what could be the secret. So I went onto the internet and tried to do research about uh, jackfruit and I found that it is a deep feeder. It sends its roots so deep and where the crops cannot, the, the roots of other crops cannot reach, the jackfruit roots actually reach there and they can survive. And then there are some trees that are planted in the banana plantation, the fruit trees. There are some that are nutritious to the kids, like the popo, the tomato tree and other trees. So they are good to these children, they help them the, for like the mangoes. When you, you intercrop them with the, the banana, it's very easy for the, for the children to access those fruits other than going to the market or to the neighbors. I am going to go to the market, I am going to go to the market, I am going to go to the market, and I am going to go to the market. I am going to go to the market, Farmers with large plantations use castor oil trees to stake the bananas and thus save the money that would be spent on buying the stakes. With the increasing population and the challenges brought about by climate change, it is crucial that farming practices that increase the optimization of land are promoted.